I'm Mari with Mari Sews, and today I wanted to just bring you all a review on the Green Style Creations Brassy Joggers. I have been wearing these pretty much nonstop. It's a really good pattern. You can see that it actually has a pretty wide elastic waist here. That's a two inch elastic that's down in there. And then there's also the cords that you can pull. I actually like having both options for the elastic and the pulls. And to get these pulls in there, I just made a couple of buttonholes right through the fabric. I did interface the back of this fabric before I put the buttonholes in there. When you sew it up on your sewing machine, it's gonna go by a lot easier with the interfacing on the back. Trust me, you don't really want to have to struggle with a buttonhole on your sewing machine because you didn't interface it. So make sure that you're interfacing the back of your buttonholes. <laughs> this pocket is actually just one layer of fabric right here in the front, which is nice because it helps reduce bulk. Oftentimes when you run across patterns that have slant pockets in like this, it requires two pieces of fabric or you're folding it over and that really isn't the case. But because it's only the one piece that's behind it, this piece, you have to make sure that you stitch it down so that way, well, you have a functional pocket, right? <laughs> you wanna be able to put your hand in there without touching your thigh. <laughs> now, for me personally, I just moved this right on over to my cover stitch so you can see all of that gray stitching right along there. If you don't have a cover stitch, it's okay. You can still do this on your sewing machine. I would actually recommend maybe even doing two little nice rows of stitching next to each other. And I think it would make a really cute detail on both of those. Although I actually decided to do the slant pocket view for this pattern, they do give you the option to do really fun zipper pockets right in there. So you would need two seven inch zippers and then some woven fabric, like a thin quilting cotton or something that wouldn't create too much bulk. And then you can have some really fun zipper pockets there. I, I really do want to try that option next. I think it's going to be really cool. This pattern doesn't have any back pockets. It's just kind of plain. And I opted to do the straight leg version, but you can add in a cuff if you want to. So I've been wearing my brassy joggers around the house quite a bit. I, these, these things get a lot of wear. <laughs> but I'll, I'll admit that I actually like wearing these when I'm doing my strength training um, sessions with my trainer because they're just, they're so comfortable. Sometimes, you know, tights will like pinch and, you know, in some ways, I don't know. I don't know about you, but a girl's put on a couple of pounds. And so <laughs> and so when I'm wearing my tights, it just, it all fits a little differently. I don't have to worry about my pants feeling too tight when I bend over to do a deadlift or something like that, right? So it is a really great pattern. The fabric that I used for this was actually a panel fabric made by Lady McElroy. Um... And this is one of her jerseys. You all, I was actually surprised that this fabric was called a jersey because for me, when I think about jerseys, I think about thinner kind of t-shirt material. And well, this fabric has a little bit of oomph to it. And so I just, it, it, it's a really good fabric. I picked this up from Three Little Birds during their grand opening. And if they still have it, I'll be sure to list it in the description box below so that way you can find it. Now, I did mention that this was a panel fabric. So let me show you the back here. You see these stripes in these flowers? The stripes were actually along the selvage end and then it was flowers, all of this, which faded into this and then it kind of repeated on the other side. And with the way that the actual fabric stretch was oriented, it actually kind of necessitated that I put these stripes along the edge of my pants because that's just the way the stretch goes. There isn't as much, as much stretch actually going in this direction. It doesn't stretch much at all, actually. So I did want to make sure that the stretch was going 
in the proper direction. If you haven't made a lot of stuff with knits or you've been scared to kind of jump in, it's really not that hard. But the one thing that I want to make sure to tell you that you need to kind of make sure that you're doing is check the direction of stretch that your knit fabric is going because not all knits stretch in both directions, you know, and they call it four-way <laughs> stretch. Not all knits have that. In fact, not all knits actually stretch. So make sure that you're paying attention to the stretch requirements on your actual pattern and then make sure that you're paying attention to the direction that the stretch is going. You really want your pants to be able to stretch along your booty. So that way, if you're sitting down, if you're bending over, they're still comfortable. You know, you don't, you don't want to cut it in the other direction and then you're like, you can't breathe as you're eating your Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> not fun. As a bit of a side note, my personal trainer, his name is Mark. So he's actually going to be doing a turkey burn on the 21st at 1 o'clock and I'm super excited to be doing it with him, you all. So if you want to join in and just kind of like burn a couple of extra calories, I'll put it down in the description box below um, as soon as it's available so that way any of you watching this can jump on that if you'd like. I did tell him that he had to have some like joint friendly options because you are uh, these these knees don't act the way they used to <laughs> no <laughs> all the popping and crackling that they do nowadays no i need i need some i need some nice joint friendly exercise <laughs> so he'll be sure to include that stuff let me know if you want to join me <laughs> one other thing that i wanted to note about this pattern in particular is that it comes in two different inseam lengths, which is really helpful because I ended up choosing the shorter inseam, inseam. I think it was about 30 inches and it worked out perfectly for me. I didn't actually have to do any kind of crazy hemming or anything on these pants. So I do appreciate the two different inseam options. I mean, come on, us, us shorter people need a little bit of we need a little bit of help every now and then, right? Make it a little easy on us, why not? Now let's talk a bit about the actual sizing for this pattern. Green Cell Creations has a bit of a different size chart. Um, so the sizing for this one is letter B through M, which pretty much accommodates a waist of 22 inches all the way up to 57 inches and a hip of 32 inches to 62 inches. So the sizing here is actually pretty good. Right now, for me, my hips are about 49 inches and my waist is 35 inches. So that meant that I cut the majority of my pants out in a size J, which accommodated my hips, but then I graded my waistband down to an H yeah, it was an H. Now, my waist is actually on the smaller end of that waist range sizing that they have, but because these aren't actually made to sit all the way up on your actual natural waist, they do sit a little lower than that. I wasn't too worried about it because I do get wider because of my hips. So, I mean, you all, this is a really easy sew. And if you're looking for some really comfortable pants to wear with some like different style options, definitely check it out. If you're curious about Green Cell Creations, but you've never actually sewn a lot of their patterns, you can actually check out this playlist right over here. Um, I am an ambassador for Green Cell Creations, but I've been sewing their products, their patterns for much longer than I've been an ambassador. So check out the playlist right over there if you're looking for some workout inspiration. And you all, until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.